Hi everybody, I am back and I have exited the convention halls at Expo 24 uh, to stop off with one of my favourites, Solvi. I am here with you in the Viking camp. How are you guys getting on? Oh, we're having a great time. We've been uh, invaded by Daleks, Ghostbusters and Riker. <laughs> and Captain America. Of course. So hang on, Riker was down here going, hmm, strange Indian life forms. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so you guys have got a bigger camp than I have ever seen before this year. The first thing I want to talk about is here. So what is going on just over here? Hi, so here we have our lovely Saxon friend Wolfric here. He is doing a wood turning, which is how his lathe here, as you can see. And it's how we make all of our bowls and our plates in the time period. So he's authentically using a wooden lathe here. Let's see. All right, well, I'll, I'll come and talk to the man himself because <laughs> I am very curious about that. So, Wolfric, yes, sir? Yes. So what exactly have you put together here and how does it work? Okay, so the, you have a bed of a lathe where you have two points just holding the wood still, a rope wrapped around the mandrel to allow me to spin it down, and then this pole, which is tied to the tree up here. Convenient tree. Convenient tree, um, carefully selected tree, uh, then just returns the treadle back to the start site. Okay. So that when I put the blade onto the wood, I'm going to cut it when I'm on the downstroke and move the tool back off the wood when it's back on the upstroke. So the ah. tree is just resetting the treadle so I can press down on it. Ah, gun. so the blade only strikes on the downswing. Correct, exactly right. Yeah. That, how many years have you been practicing to be able to do this? Only four years. Four years, yeah. really? How did you get into it? Um, I had some time in 2020, like a lot of us did. Oh, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, well, I, I see you've got a few finished pieces over here. So if you want to come yeah. across and actually walk us through what the actual process is for whenever it's a finished piece. So, so this is what we're hoping the piece that's on the lathe will look like this I turned a few weeks ago from the same log. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for, uh, hopefully without the split. And um, one thing you'll notice if I show you this bowl, about the way that we know that the Anglo-Saxons made their bowls, is that that shape is actually no longer round. It now has that oval shape to it. And that tells us, because the finds we get from the Anglo-Saxon period are all oval, tells us that the wood was turned when it was freshly cut, and then the wood shrinks, and, it, and wood only shrinks in the radius of the tree and not in the height. So if you look on the edge there, you can see the tree rings, which represent the height of the tree. So it's kind of narrowed on the radius, but not on the height, which gives you this oval shape. So as the, as the actual timber cures after cutting is where it comes to its, its final resting place? Yeah, after you've made the bowl, in fact, exactly. Interesting, so, I, I'm actually quite surprised because I would have thought seasoned wood would have been what was used and not, you know, fresh wood. So iron and sharp iron tools are a very valuable commodity and if you can cut a wood when it's softer you get a lot more work out of your iron tools than you would do if you're trying to cut it seasoned. Perfect. Well, Wolfric, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You're welcome. Folks, if you're coming down, make sure and come and have a look. You're just here for the Saturday, yes? Yes. Okay, so if you're coming down on the Saturday, make sure and come across and have a look because bits of history like this are what's really, really interesting. So let's go back to Solvi and uh, I tell you what, Let's take a wander through the gigantic encampment that you've set up this year. Absolutely, yes. So we've got quite a few different crafts going on. As you saw, our wooden, our wooden lathe man, he's here today. We've got our gnarl binding, which is where you get your socks, your hats, your mittens going off here. Um, as you can see, everybody was busy in the Viking period and in the Saxon encampment. We're never a dull moment. There's no time to rest. But we do have some of our lovely playing, people playing their own board games, actually. Wait, they're playing their own board games? Yes, they are. They're playing what's called Nefertafel. We've also got a pre-backgammon over in one of our other encampments. Um, we've got people playing dice games, such as Liar Dice, where it's a bit like gambling. Uh-huh. Like... I, I, I know you guys. Um, so liar dice is where you have um, your dice in a cup and you say, oh, I've got three sixes. And be like, no, no, I don't think you've got three sixes. I think you've got three ones. Or we'll, we'll put a silver penny for it. And if the person who is telling that says I've got three sixes has three sixes, they get their money. If they don't, they've got to give it back. <laughs> so it's sort of kind of like like poker and like holding it, Texas Hold'em, but uh, with dice. I see. All right, well, let's let's move on up the camp. Rob, if you want to move ahead of us a little bit, mate. 
Uh, so up here, we've got a lot of the uh, the different tentage and stuff that you guys would normally set up. Yes, yes, we've got um, an A-frame tent, which is this kind of tent here with that lovely Viking shape. We've got a Gatteld tent, which is that smaller tent there. And then we've got some awnings and little one-man soldier tent sort of thing. So how close to, well, basically the time period would you say the camp layout would be at the moment? Um, it, well, it's actually a mixture because we've got no set date. We've got lovely people like myself who are in their very nice finery that are from a much earlier period. We've got our lovely Osseberg Viking bed here. Um, and we are kind of all over the place from really early Vikings to quite late. We've got some Eastern Vikings in their lamellar armour with their beautiful helmets. But yeah, we've kind of got a mixture here. So any time frame from seven... 93 all the way to 1066. Excellent. And so moving on up through, uh, I'm seeing like communal areas and stuff as well, which I'm sure was very common during the period. Absolutely. So rather than our lovely awning there, um, we would have had mead halls, so great big halls filled with mead and roasting meats on a fire. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> well, you know, you're always welcome to come and join us, you know that. Um, but yeah, they would have had like the horns and the drinking and the quaffing and as as we think of Vikings in the Viking period. Mm -hmm, of course. And I'm seeing further on up, we've actually got some, some weapons training or battling going on. Um, yes, so we've got a mixture here between, um, I think we'll be setting up for what's called Hrothgar's Saga, where he talks about the Battle of Molden in 991. But at the minute, I think they're having a little bit of a play, a little bit of a, a training going on, just getting themselves less rusty after a long season of not fighting, ready for those raids happening on... on uh, in later on this afternoon at three o'clock. <laughs> so the, the spring season is here and it's time to go a raiding. Absolutely, trying to go and get those women and those uh, monks, they're very high commodity, go and get that gold from England that we keep hearing so much about, that silver hoards. Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard there were a few, uh, you know, like monasteries and stuff that tragically burnt down and you guys just happened to be there. Abs you rescued the treasure. Absolutely. I mean, we tried to help the monks, but they just didn't want our help. So we, what were we to do? <laughs> All right. So you guys are not the only society here this year. So across the way, if we go out this way, yeah. who do we have? So we have our Saxon counterparts from Regia and Glorium. They are from Mercia for this group, but they are again like us, are all over the country, up in Scotland and Wales for definite. Um, so they're our first ones. They are being our Saxons this afternoon in our Saxons versus Vikings battle. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we have Vicus, who are a Roman and Bretonian um, and picked. Uh, society so they do just before the vikings and those early saxons so those that 400 bc when they come out 400 ad even when they come over and uh help <laughs> the the poor savage english i see well i i can see we're crossing the border <laughs> yes yes there is definitely a border between the two you can't have saxons and vikings too close together that's how wars break out <laughs> so yes this is our lovely friends regio who've come to support us for the last few years as you can see they're all so busy their weapons are very similar to ours um, and they're obviously they're with their their lovely uh, monk there or a friar a monk. monk. Uh, I was right, just checking. <laughs> Always worth a checking. Always worth a checking. <laughs> All right, so and further on down, you're saying we have some Romans and Pictish uh, reenactors as well. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, so these are Vicus. They aren't here as in force as they could be, sadly, because they have a big one going down in Colchester. Apparently, some woman named Boudica has uh, come to destroy the Romans. So they're, they're uh, having to go down in force. Uh, Boudicca, I've never heard of her. No, ne neither <laughs> have I. <laughs> Much it, before my time. <laughs> it is impressive to see a lot of the old artefacts that a lot of people would, you know, you'd see it in movies and stuff, but being able to actually see it in real life is such a different thing. Yes, absolutely. So we've got our gladiatorial weapons there, which they are doing later on um, this afternoon, and they've done some this morning. And those wonderful, amazing musical instruments that we think about and don't really see, especially those ones that strike fear in the hearts of whenever you hear them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's absolutely great to see you guys out here and see you actually bringing the history to the public here at Expo. Everybody, I tell you what, if you're coming down this weekend, I highly recommend come and check out some of the reenactors that are out here at the show. Because being able to actually, like, well, I won't say touch, but see in real life a piece of history is something really special. We'll move on. We'll see you again very soon.